class, we started off um, about looking at um, you know uh, financial stewardship. We we looked at we covered some very important aspects of uh, finances, and uh, um, uh, I think uh, it's it's you know as an introduction, we looked at uh, several verses that um, point to the fact that God is not against money. He's not against people having money. He's not against people using money, right? Uh, we looked at several scriptures. So, um, so anything that uh, that caught your attention, you know, in last class, um, uh, just open it up for you to share. Anything that you um, you felt was or something was new, maybe you've never seen that scripture before, or you know something you felt was reiterated. You know about this whole aspect of money and God, uh, God, uh, God's perspective about money and so on. So, anyone, um, anything that you felt, um, anything that you learned in last class, maybe just one thing that you can just share. Um, Rosalind, Anita, Jeffina, Aradna, Zelitoli, Collins. Okay, Stephen was not there. Uh, Nicholson, Rebi, Daryl, Abu Bakr, Leah, Leah Lama. Anyone, you know, uh, what you, um, any one thing that you felt was um, something new, something, something that you learned. Anything at all? Um, okay, what what do you think of this verse? Okay, let me just ask. Um, okay, um, what what do you think of uh, prosperity? You know, so let me ask that question. Um, prosperity is it? Um, what is what do you think of this word? What comes to your mind when you think of this word? Prosperity. Sufficiency. Sufficiency. Okay. Okay. Sufficient. Um, Pastor, having enough so that we can help others, so that we can be a blessing okay. for others. Okay. Having enough. Okay. Having enough. Okay. Sub uh, Subhashish uh, says abundance. Having enough. Sufficient. Yeah. So, um, having having the right attitude with what you have. Uh, okay, uh, having the right attitude towards what you have. Okay, I'll put that down. Though it's not, um, you know, it's it's not directly, you know, what prosperity would mean. Uh, prosperity would. Okay. Also. Uh, you know, Daryl has put down security, which means that prosperity also gives a sense of security, right? A sense of, okay, I can do this, or I can fall back on this kind of um, feeling, right? Okay, so, so, okay, so the next question, when it comes to prosperity, okay, so we know that... Uh, Okay, it, it you know it, it involves all this, or it, it provides you know uh, this. Um, uh, just to clarify, you know, it prosperity. It's uh, it, well, it means that you have sufficient and you have more than enough, right? So there is an overflow. Okay, so have that picture in mind because uh, it means that the needs are taken care of, maybe. If you if you if you're looking at personal needs, the personal needs are taken care of, and there's an overflow. There's more than enough, right, to share, to give, uh, to help, and so on, right. So um, prosperity, we we know, is not confined to or restricted to money alone, right? Finances alone. So so what else? You know, if you're saying prosperity, what other areas can you think of? 
that a, pros a person can be prosperous about? Good health. Good health. You can, uh, you can thrive. You know, when we say, okay, it's, it's prosperous, um, you can, though we don't use that word, but the idea that is conveyed is a person is, uh, you know, is, is in good health, you know, thriving, flourishing, right? Okay. I'm joy, peace, okay, peace and joy emotionally. So emotionally, uh, also you are flourishing you know I, I i every time i think of flourish you know and thrive i just have this picture of a of a field you know uh, maybe it's a corn or paddy or something that is grown but it's it's all green and uh, you know there's a gentle breeze and you know it's all green and thriving it's robust right flourishing healthy right so that's uh, that's a picture which comes to my mind every time okay so zelitoli says in all in every aspect of our life spiritually financially emotionally yeah so prosperous um, prosperity need not be just money so when we are talking about prosperity um, it need not be just finances it need not be material wealth but it's all areas of our lives you know physical emotional spiritual relational um, relationally also you know it's you're prospering in your relationship Right. Um, let me just read. We, we will come back to you know these scriptures over and over again. But I just want to read from um, um, John's third epistle, right? Three John and verse two. It says, "Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health, just as your soul prospers." So. That's uh, third episode of John. So three John and verse two. And there's only one chapter, right? So three John verse two. Uh, beloved, I pray. So this is John's prayer for for the church, for those he knows. You know, he's saying, "I pray that you may prosper in all things." So he's saying that you may thrive, that you may flourish, um, that you may prosper in all things. And then he talks about physical health, and right? he says, uh, and be in health. Okay, so, um, and the word prosper there, just pulling that out, means, um, you know, succeed or be successful, right? Um, it's a, a Greek word which means uh, su succeeding and being successful. So he's saying, you know, you be successful on all things. And he, he talks about health, he talks about physical health. Uh, that you may uh, be in good health, you know. He says that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. So he's just covering all aspects of a, a person's life, a person's being, right? Uh, just as your soul prospers, just as your, and the word used there is suke, which from which we get the word psychology. And it's something to do with your the state of your mind, the state of your emotions, your imagination, your intellect, everything put together. So he's saying, say, hey, I pray that you may prosper in all things. So, so which means that, which gives us a picture about um, uh, God's heart for us, right? So John is praying this prayer for the believer which uh, uh, which from from which we get God's God's will or God's desire for the believer that a believer would a, a child of God would prosper and be in health in all things uh, just as the soul prospers okay so and, and we also see the connection there that as the soul prospers which means that the prosperity of the soul is also, you know, it's, it's all interconnected. It's connected with the prosperity of all things and 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 uh, the uh, and our health also, right? Um, so I guess you learn more in uh, uh, emotional health and uh, uh, you know um, uh, the the class which deals with that uh, emotional well being. Uh, so uh, you'll deal with that uh, I think next semester, right? So so anyway, so. Um, so this covers all aspects. So prosperity, we see that it's not an isolated word. It's not an isolated term referring to 
you know, money, but it's covering all aspects of life. Okay. So we also, last class, we also saw, saw that um, we could have, when it comes to money, uh, money, you know, is, is tainted uh, with a lot of things. You know, it's, it's used for uh, good purposes. It can be used for bad purposes. It can be used as a bribe to manipulate you know a certain decision it can be used as a, as a gift to help someone in need uh, so you see that you know it's it's it, it can it, it, people can have a lot of greed uh, covetousness about money and want more of it or people could be you know truly generous and um, sacrificial in giving away so you see that uh, uh, we need to have the right perspective about money and especially as believers and maybe you know current leaders or future leaders where um, we don't have to feel guilty about using money we don't have to feel guilty about receiving money okay so you we have the right perspective where money does not have a hold on us but we have the right hold on money right uh, like uh, somebody said you know hold on to things lightly okay uh, so when it comes to things uh, when it comes to you know uh, people you know what you need to hold on to right when it comes to things we, we have a lighter grip right and when we have the right perspective or right attitude towards money then wonderful things start happening you know uh, because we are no more constrained uh, or held back or even uh, you know entangled by money you know our decisions uh, need not be controlled by money you know, we will take into fact we will take into consideration you know the, the lord jesus talks about hey if you want to build a house won't you sit down and consider whether you will have enough and then do it yeah we will take into consideration right um, like the lord rightly said we will we'll consider it but our decisions our life um, need not be controlled uh, by money our life's decisions need not be controlled by money right because we have uh, someone who is the provider okay i just want to put down um okay uh, uh um a definition of you know the word attitude it means um, a settled way of thinking or feeling about something a settled way right you kind of settled you've considered you and uh, this is how you think about certain things you this is about you feel about certain things right this is your perspective so it 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 actually you know your attitude defines how you're going to um your, how you're going to react how you're going to respond to things of a particular nature and it's going to also dictate how you you know the future course of action your decision so our attitude about money really would uh, is very very important Right? And to have a biblical attitude towards money, to, to look at money the same way God looks at it, right, would be something very precious, would be something transformative and life-changing in our lives. Okay? And our attitude towards money could be, you know, it depends on various things, right? You know, like, like all other things in life, the way we grew up. Okay? So for example, you know, when um, growing up, well, I didn't have much, right? So, uh, uh, there, there was no, I don't think there was any lack, um, but and I, you know, I would have preferred to have some things new, like clothes or, you know, um, and, you know, sometimes uh, it wasn't there, right? So, uh, and it, it also, you know, I would have preferred to have some money in hand in order to, in order to buy some things, in order to, you know, spend it on myself, but it wasn't there. So, you know, I, Growing, I mean, sorry, I grew up, I growing up, uh, I preferred to, uh, I, my attitude towards it was that it's, it's never enough, right? So uh, having a tighter grip on it, not letting go of it, right? So we could have several attitudes, uh, different kinds of attitudes about money that uh, hey, if I let go of it, then I will not have enough. Uh, if I let go of it today, then there will not be enough tomorrow you know so, so many uh, 
so many things going in our minds. Um, so that is why we looked at attitude. Okay, so we looked at um, uh, some key attitudes, some good attitudes that we might have. We could have about money, uh, some bad attitudes, uh, terrible attitudes that we could have about money, uh, you know, comparison, competition, greed, um, even, you know, uh, our attitude of money uh, with regard to spirituality. So we might think, okay, this person does not have enough. This person, you know, leads, uh, does not have a bank balance, does not have anything. So he must be very spiritual. You know, we might attribute that to great spirituality or great faith or, um, or, or we could do the other way. You know, we could attribute abundance to great spirituality or great uh, faith and so on. So both are equally, equally wrong, right? Um, so, uh, so coming to certain wrong conclusions because of our attitude towards money. So we looked at that. Okay, so today uh, we're just going to look at uh, uh, prosperity and uh, biblically, you know, uh, what does it mean to be, um, to be prosperous and uh, maybe look at a definition of biblical prosperity. Um, let me just share the notes. Um, for those of you who've joined newly, you can download the notes from the classwork section. Okay, so um, biblical prosperity. Okay, so what is, so like we said, prosperous, to be prosperous or to prosper is to be successful. Okay, so it is to be successful, it is to thrive, it is to flourish, and it's not just uh, limited to money, money alone or finances alone. Okay, so biblical prosperity, when we look at it, now this is a definition, okay, uh, like it's not a perfect definition, but it's some definition which gives us some clarity. Okay, so let's look at it. Biblical prosperity is divinely enabled success growth increase through divinely appointed means for divinely appointed purposes. Okay, let me read that again. Biblical prosperity is divinely enabled success growth and increase through divinely appointed means for divinely appointed purposes. So the first part of it, divinely appointed, uh, divinely enabled, which means that uh, it's enabled, empowered, or, uh, uh, you know, uh, we have um, uh, this empowerment from God. So it's, it's divine, divinely enabled. So it's divinely enabled success. We can talk about success, growth, uh, thriving, flourishing, increase, right? Through divinely enabled means or methods and it is for divinely appointed purposes so we can look at you know biblical prosperity in this way that it is uh, divinely en enabled or it's it's a god thing right uh, god enabled spirit enabled um, success spirit enabled growth uh, god enabled increase through God appointed methods or God appointed ways, uh, God appointed means, and it is for God appointed purposes or objectives, right? So one of the things that we need to understand it's when it's God enabled or divinely appointed, then it is a path of righteousness because it comes from him who is holy, it comes from him who is uh, who is righteous. Uh, it comes from him who is in whom there is no darkness at all. Right? Figuratively, when you when you look at darkness, in whom there is no sin, that he is God. He is he is light. Um, in in him there is uh, no sin at all. Right? There is no darkness. Um, so so his ways are ways of righteousness. So when God wants to prosper someone, when God wants to um, uh, wants to enable someone to succeed, do well in life, and um, you know when he up when he when he says, okay, I, I want to take you down this path or um, take you down to this objective of success and growth and increase, the path towards that or the means towards that, the steps towards that are not unrighteous paths. Uh, we need to uh, 
be be clear in that these are parts of righteousness for example you know we look at psalm 23 psalm 23 the psalmist uh, testifies and he says um he restores my soul the lord restores my soul he leads me in parts of righteousness okay so this is how he leads me the, it's the shepherd who leads who goes before i follow he leads me in paths of righteousness. So the, 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 the path that he takes, the, the way that he takes, the steps that he takes, the methodology, everything is a righteous one. It is not unrighteous. So this is what uh, divinely um, uh, enabled uh, prosperity looks like. Because he, he takes people through means that are uh, again divinely appointed or divinely enabled means which are righteous okay so uh, when it comes to god when it comes to him leading um, it is not path of unrighteousness okay so it, he will not ask you to rob a bank so that you can give generously and pay a tenth of that to the church and you know plant more churches and so his you know the end just not does not justify the means you know sometimes we uh we say you know the end justifies the means so let me just put that uh, i just want to put that in bracket you know sometimes because sometimes we say okay the end justifies the means which means that hey, I, if i you know, this is my objective this is my goal so if i need to reach that no that's a good goal let's say you know i want to grow i want to be successful i want to be prosperous etc it's a good goal i want to help people it's a good goal but that does not justify the means just that just not make the means um, justifiable in the sense the way in which i reach that goal goal to be successful goal to be you know uh, prosperous now in order to help others successful in order to help others maybe successful or prosperous in order to be an influence for good in life um, you know all that but that does not justify the means the method the way i reach that place Right? Because God leads us in parts of righteousness. Okay, um, Second Chronicles 16 and verse 9. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of those whose heart is loyal to him. Okay, And then the, the rebuke is there, uh, the second part of that. So when we... We, we can experience this divinely enabled growth, success, increase uh, in every area of our lives. Okay, in every area of our lives. We're going to, in the next chapter, we're going to look at uh, you know uh, the reasons why we can expect you know uh, why prosperity is not a bad word um, and uh, how it has come to become a bad word you know in, in circles because of greed because of covetousness because of the way it has been you know misused uh, even in christian circles right money has been misused uh, in uh, the abuse of it uh, in in christian circles sadly in the church and and therefore you know this whole thing of uh, you know prosperity being a bad word itself but when we look into the word when we look at god when we look at the nature of god you know we, we look at his heart you know, the, the, the scripture that we saw that he takes pleasure in the prosperity of his servants like we looked at that scripture you know, in psalm i think it is uh, psalm 37 is it um let me just uh, read that yeah psalm 35 and verse 27 right psalm 35 and verse 27 that god takes pleasure in the prosperity of his servants so uh he is he's delighting right in the prosperity of his servants at the same time you know last class i remember we we, we closed with that scripture first timothy chapter 6 and verse 17 right which talks about how we should not trust put our trust in uncertain riches but in god who gives us to all richly uh, all things to enjoy first timothy 6 and verse 17 right so so that is the balance that is the wholesomeness right of prosperity right okay so so in this scripture in this verse 
um, talks about how God wants to show himself strong on behalf of those whose hearts are loyal to him. So this whole thing of prosperity, this whole thing of riches and everything, uh, God, uh, more than us, you know, I feel that God wants to, God desires, he wants to show himself strong in this area. He wants to, um, you know, take pleasure in the prosperity of our lives. And, uh, and he wants to give, but he wants to give so that we don't destroy our lives you know, in a manner that we don't destroy our lives with it, that we don't make idols out of it, like the, the children of Israel with the gold that God gave them as they were leaving Egypt. God gave them, if you, if you read, you see that the Egyptians actually, they, they gave of their jewels and ornaments and everything as they were leaving. They said, take it and go. Now, with those very things, they made idol, they made that golden calf in the wilderness, right? So the very things that they received, uh, they, uh, because of the favor of God, they made that an idol. So now God doesn't want to destroy our lives. God doesn't want us to destroy our lives. So he will, um, he will work on our hearts. So that's why it says that he wants to show himself strong and whose hearts are loyal towards him, whose hearts are loyal to him. Right. Uh, he wants to show himself strong. He wants to display, put on display what he can do in our lives, how he can, you know, enable our lives to be successful, how he can enable our lives to grow and, uh, you know, uh, and be a success and thrive and so on in all areas. But he wants our hearts to be loyal to him because when our heart is on him, when our heart is captured you know, with his love and we, our heart is captured by him, then there will be no question of turning to the left or right or becoming distracted by the things of the world, right? When our heart is, when, when we are wholeheartedly, when we are given to the Lord and for his purposes, then we are not, uh, we are not pulled away by any of these things, right? Money is just a tool for us to get the job done. God can actually make sure that, you know, thousands and thousands of uh, currency just or money just goes through our hands so that we can be an instrument of righteousness in his hands right okay so let's look at a few people who uh, you know sometimes we might have uh, uh, an example of uh, 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 you know uh, sorry uh, before we go into the people we just just want to look at uh, the life of Jacob and uh, you know, how supernaturally God enabled uh, a divine increase in his life. Right? Um, Genesis 28, uh, verses 20 and 20, 20 to 22, um, this is what uh, jo Jacob's uh, declaration or testimony he says, you know, if God will be with me and keep me in this way that I'm going and give me bread to eat and clothing to put on so that I come back to my father's house in peace, then the Lord shall be my God. Okay, and then he talks about, um, and this stone which I have set as a pillar shall be God's house. And of all that you give me, I will surely give a tenth to you. You know, this is his um, declaration. And we see this in, in Genesis chapter um, 28. Um, just, uh, yeah. So, um, so this is uh, immediately, you know, after his um, encounter, uh, he has this uh, dream. Um, and he has his encounter, um, uh, the ladder and the uh, uh, ladder from heaven to earth, and um, the angels descending, ascending, and then he calls the name of the place uh, uh, Bethel, and and so on, right? So this same Jacob, you know, we see in Genesis 30, where he is with uh, uh, Laban, and uh, and and Laban says, you know, what will you give me? Uh, sorry, um, what shall I give you, right? Verse 31, chapter 30, verse 31. And Jacob says, you know, uh, I just want this one thing. I will I will keep your, you know, he's been keeping tending flocks um, over, you know, uh, for Leah, for Rachel, and many years have gone. Now he wants to leave, and then he says, okay, okay. Uh, this is what I I will do. I will tend your flocks. I will keep your flocks. And whatever uh, 
the 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 ones that are born which are speckled and spotted uh, among the goats you know these i want to be my wages and among the lambs uh, yeah someone asked a question okay. yeah robert you have a question so he said that was accidentally oh okay okay no problem okay so so this is uh, this is something um, that he does and and then we read i'm sure we've read that um, you know whole story of how he keeps those rods he strips those rods of you know green poplar uh, rods and almond and chestnut chestnut trees he places that in the feeding trough um, uh, of the um, in the watering trough sorry uh, of the flock and they come there and they see it and um, and the ones which go and uh, uh, litter uh, and they give birth um, they happen to have the same kind of a spots and flecks uh, speckled and and so on and brown and so on so um, something supernatural happens you know now we we do not know um, you know how this came about we accept that it's a supernatural work and the his flock increases right uh, greatly so uh, we see that um, right in the old testament we 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 see that happening and it is possible and it does happen um, in our time as well right so just to show the the supernatural work of god in, when it comes to increase and growth okay so let's look at um, you know sometimes what happens is uh, uh, when we think about the bible when we think about the old testament when we think about people in the bible um you know we've seen some pictures uh maybe growing up we've seen these uh you know some charts when we went to our sunday school and we you know and then we have a um, we have a picture of these people of these people who lived in biblical times right we um, like abraham isaac you know, all these people then um so we have in our own mind some conclusion okay the kind of uh, lives they lived the kind of wealth they had etc and uh, sometimes we might have a picture okay they they wore rags they because they were wandering about in wilderness they went from place to place and then so we might have a different you know kind of a of a picture in our mind so let's look at a few um for a few of these uh, biblical characters and uh, and what scripture really has to say about um like what they possessed okay now they, these were people who walked with god who encountered god who um uh, you know god did things through them uh, etc it's not that they are not people without flaws yes um, they had their own limitations they had their flaws but but god worked through them right? god uh, did a work through them now this is the kind of lives they lived okay uh, and what they possessed um uh, because of because of who god is and right? what they received from his hand genesis 24 and verse 1 says now abraham was old let me just uh, this is verse 1 and also verses 34 and 35 um now abraham was old well advanced in age and the lord has blessed had blessed abraham in all things okay now god is not a stingy god god is not one who holds back blessings whenever we look at the word blessing uh, we might think of you know we might become very spiritual and think of okay uh, faith and the gifts and and the presence of god and god leading yes uh, that is very much a big part of blessing uh, that we we can enjoy as believers but, but look at this abraham was um, the lord had blessed abraham in all things verse 34 and so he said i am abraham's uh, so this talking about uh, uh, elias right he, he, so he says i am abraham's servant this is his testimony about abraham he says the lord had blessed has blessed my master greatly and he has become great and he has given him flocks and herds silver and gold male and female servants and camels and donkeys so he's talking about literally is this kind of giving a financial report of the kind of wealth that abraham enjoyed or abraham had right uh, he had servants male female servants he had flock so literally in you know gold and silver uh, herds flocks it's all in plural 
right? Um, and also camels and donkeys and so on. So this is this is what Abraham had. We look at Isaac, Genesis 26. Okay, then Isaac sowed in that land and reaped in the same year a hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. Okay, and it was actually uh, you know, difficult circumstances, difficult environment, difficult weather conditions. Um, so this is what happened. You know, it's a divinely enabled growth, divinely enabled success. The man began to prosper, verse 13. The man began to prosper and continued prospering until he became very prosperous. For he had possessions of flocks and possessions of herds and a great number of servants. So the Philistines invite, envied him. Okay, the Philistines looked at him and they envied him. Um, so, you know, this is what we read about Isaac. We read about Jacob. Um, similarly, that... Uh, Man became exceedingly prosperous, had large flocks, female and male servants, and uh, camels and donkeys. Then we read about Joseph. The, 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 the Lord was with Joseph, and he was a successful man. Okay. Um, well, he went, he was a slave, but it says, you know, what a what a definition. Right? He was sold as a slave. He's there as a as a slave in uh, in Potiphar's house. Um and this is what we read about him. The Lord was with Joseph, and he was a successful man. Talking about you know prosperity when it came to work, prosperity uh, relationally, prosperity and favor um, with with man. Right? He was a successful man. He was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. And his master saw that the Lord was with him, and the Lord made all he did, all that Joseph did to prosper in his hand. So Joseph found favor in his sight and served him. Then he made him, that is Potiphar made him, overseer of his house. And all that he had, he put under his authority. Okay, So this is something that we see. That this is what Potiphar did, all that he had. And, and when, we, when we read through, we see that he did not know anything. He did not concern himself about anything except that the food was there on a the table and he ate, ate of it. Everything uh, Joseph looked into, right? And he was able to trust him, give him uh, all that. And, and this is what he did. In the prison, you know, verse 23, the keeper of the prison did not look into anything that was under Joseph's authority because the Lord was with him. And whatever he did, the Lord made it prosper. prosper sorry. So we see that um, amazing. You know, so so it's, it's as if the Lord is wanting this. Uh, the Lord wants to, wants people to, you know, to grow, to increase, to be successful in the right way, with the right attitude. And not to be, you know, uh, not to let wealth is, wealth control them or riches control them in any way, or let wealth be their idol, or or people, you know, as individuals that they should put their trust in him. But the fact is that the Lord is saying, you know, I want to increase. I want to, um, you know, display, show myself strong, and what I can do in in someone's life. Right? It's amazing to see God's perspective. Um, so when we look at the life of Job, we know that Job went through, you know, something, some challenges, some terrible things uh, that he is, you know, he went through. But at the end of it, we see the end that was desired by the Lord, right? Um, the Lord restored Job's losses when he prayed for his friends. Indeed, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Now, the Lord blessed the latter days of Job more than his beginning. Uh, and then he go, goes on to explain the sheep, camels, oxen, and donkeys, and, and all that he had. Right? So, so the thing is that, um, the Lord, when our heart is loyal towards him, his desire is that he wants to show himself strong in our behalf. Okay? So many times we might think that, okay, God is holding back the blessing, or God does not want me to 
prosper or lord is god is keeping me so that you know uh, i don't fall but so i i i choose to be in this manner but the fact is that god you know rather than saying that you know it's like when we we looked at the holy spirit class and we looked at gifts and character and it's like saying okay god i uh, i might fall if i start moving in the gifts so i i do i'd rather not do that no that's not god's desire god's desire is that we be strong in character so that he can do more through us right um okay so there are people who fell because of riches because of the fact that they were their heart was not in the right place right we read about balam uh who who received from balak um, and we see that in numbers 22 to 24 uh and then we see that he uh, bala gave him gifts of uh, uh it it is it, 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 interesting you know, it says uh, a diviner's gift was given to him by others uh, bala also gave him uh, gifts of oxen and sheep and so on he received all that and he bala knew that uh, he cannot curse the the, the children of israel he, he cannot curse the people of god but but at the same time he was still interacting he was still receiving uh from balak right so we we see that and second peter 2 15 to 16 uh talks about the fact that um, uh, let me just read that verse okay um they have forsaken the right way it talks about people who uh, false teachers um those who fall in um, those who fall down and um, the character of of those who are covetous and so on it says they have forsaken the right way and gone astray following the way of balam the son of beor who loved the wages of unrighteousness and then goes on to how he was rebuked um, right so uh, we see such people gehazi again we know uh, that um, he went after the riches of the 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 rewards that uh, nemen brought for um, uh, for the prophet like he went after and he desired it and how he you know he was struck down with leprosy and so on so demas um, paul writes to timothy and says there he is forsaken for the for the world uh, he has left me um, judas is carried again you know um, Uh, denying uh, and also um uh, doing uh, making that making that choice of uh, um you know turning over the lord to uh, the jewish authorities for those pieces of silver right so uh, we time and again right we see that right god wanting to bless wanting to prosper because it's is the very nature of god himself um we look at you know uh, obed edom we read about that uh, i'm not going into the details you know you can go through these scriptures and you see that we 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 begin to understand uh, what god does we begin to understand that it's the very nature of god um you know elisha and the the jars of oil the supernatural god into uh, you know uh, wanting to provide for those needs in in the widow's life um this is what we we see um let's go down to second corinthians sorry second kings 4 and verse 5 right um it says so she went from him shut the door uh, what was the instruction bring those vessels and there'll be the supernatural flow of oil and um, do not gather just a few no he says take all the vessels and you know uh, this is what you need to do so it came to pass when the vessels were full verse 6 that she said to her son bring another vessel and he said to her there is not another vessel so the oil ceased but the implication is that it would have been a never ending supply you know which which again talks about uh who made this happen right we we sometimes you know we, we we don't think about that you know who is it who made this happen it is god right it is not a manipulation of man it is god who made this happen and uh the thing is he he uh, you know in they made it happen in such a way the way he planned it the way he designed it was that it would go on you know that's his heart um that is the very nature of god 
right? Um, there is not another vessel. Uh, he said to her, there is not another vessel. So the oil ceased. Okay. So the very nature of God in displaying the supernatural is, you know, to prosper, is to is to give bring in increase. Okay. So um, the the catch of fish when uh, when Peter is uh, talking to the Lord, and and the and he has tried all night. He has not caught any fish, and here he is. And the Lord says, "You let down your net for the catch," and that catch is uh, nearly breaks the net, nearly sinks the boat. Right? It's uh, that's what we see in verses six and seven. If you if you read the last two verses, so this is the nature of the Lord's. Uh, miraculous work, supernatural work, that the net was breaking, it says. And uh, it says, uh, they filled both boats so that they began to sink. It is uh, it is more than enough. It's more than enough. It's, uh, you know, it's overflowing, right? Abundant. So that's the kind of um, thing, kind of a thing that we see, uh, the, the, the heart with which God gives right the heart with which god gives so we we um we may have grown up not experiencing that we may have grown up not really um you know having this picture of god of, of being a generous heavenly father one who wants to provide for our, maybe because you know that picture we didn't have because of our earthly fathers who are you know uh, who earthly fathers are not perfect they might be great fathers, but they're not perfect. Maybe, uh, you know, they were deficient in some ways, whatever. But, but our Heavenly Father, you know, He's so loving, so kind, so generous. And, uh, and just want to close with this scripture again, you know, First Timothy 6 and verse 17. Command those who are rich in this age, present age, not to be haughty, not to trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God. So this is Paul, you know, he has experienced this living God. He has had this encounter with the living God. And he's, he's giving this command, you know, hey, this, you know, don't be prideful. Right? Don't be full of pride because of riches. Don't put your trust in those riches. Right? He has encountered this living God. He's encountered this God who richly gives all things. So he's saying, you know, it's illogical to trust in riches because one day it will be there it, it, one day it, it, at the next day it may not be there and also it's it's pointless to be proud of Abba because of the accumulation of wealth because it is a god who richly gives all things right and it, it is his grace which makes sure that uh, provides for our needs so it's it's pointless to be um, to be proud of accumulation of wealth but the fact is that God gives us richly all things to enjoy. Okay, so when our heart is in the right place, then we will we will actually truly enjoy wealth, enjoy being generous, enjoy even spending it on ourselves, um, enjoy you know using it for the extension of God's kingdom, right? Okay, so we'll stop here. You can just go through the notes, and I would say you know uh, more than anything, just spend time. Uh, just meditating on uh, what we have seen and say, okay, God, you know, I I need to change. You know, I need to change my perspective about money. I need to change my, uh, for, you know, for me personally, it was a difficult thing because for me, I had to hold on to it because that's how I, you know, I grew up not having much. So, uh, you know, but for me, it was, a, it was a paradigm shift because, for me to know that hey, God is the one who richly gives. God is a provider. He's not holding back. He's generous. He will He will take you through. Uh, it was very liberating, very life changing, right? And I and I, and I hope that um, you know you experience the same thing. Um, as Scripture just transforms your thinking and liberates you uh, as you understand more and more about God's um, generous nature and God's perspective about wealth and prosperity. Okay, so we'll stop there. Uh, we'll meet again next week. Okay, God bless you guys. Bye-bye.